Welcome to this month's Midstream Connect. I'm your host, Heather Rosenbaum. This month we're focusing on Texas Midstream, but before we get started, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Texas produces about 3.2 million barrels of oil a day and 21 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas. All of that massive output has to be gathered, processed, transported, and stored for customers. Fortunately, Texas has a midstream infrastructure in place that is second to none, and it leads to opportunities. So where are those opportunities? Clearly, the Permian has been the bright spot for unconventional activity. But the state also has its share of challenges. Other Texas shale plays have suffered in comparison to the Permian due to the commodity price slump. Drilling in the Eagleford, East Texas, and elsewhere has dropped. Centurion Midstream Group CEO Tom Ramsey talks about opportunities for midstream companies and what's next. Let's listen in. I, I think there's benefits of both depending on where your asset base is. So in the Eagleford, there's a lot of infrastructure to absorb the production. With the decline we've seen, they're actually even short some barrels versus what they were consuming in the refineries as well as shipping to Houston uh, in, in the past two years. So with that decline, you know, price of crude have, have accelerated and you know, production is lower. Um, so there is kind of a shortage of barrels in that region. The advantage in the Delaware Basin specifically of the Permian is really uh, there is no logical outlet ultimately for a lighter crude for, for the condensate that we're focused on. Today, a lot of it gets blended into the Midland streams. Um, Midland crude comes out of the ground about 39 API, but when it shows up at all the terminals, it's turned into 44 API because they're blending this lighter material into it. That blend wall has been consistently hit where you know there, people are up against that 44 and can't put any more lighter crude into it. So, I think the advantage to the Delaware not only has more uh, advantageous uh, returns on, on drilling, but also it needs an, a different outlet, whereas the Eagleford, you know, in decline, but ar already has solved kind of the outlet issue. And that's where we see the advantage of focusing on the Delaware. So I think there's, I think a lot of people are going to be focused on um, Mexico and how to access that market. We've seen several announcements on pipelines, our, our project obviously being a big one that's, that's happening. And, um, and then I think there's also rationalization in the trucking and the rail side. So, you know, with, with an excess of rail cars, excess of trucks, I think we're going to see a lot more rationalization among companies, um, a little more consolidation. You've got some of the big Texas-based MLPs selling some of their non-core assets to some of the private equity groups and smaller um, midstream groups. So I think you're seeing probably what you saw several years ago where you've got private equity jumping back into the space. You've got um, you know, some of the smaller midstream guys starting to participate and buy smaller assets. So I think it's just the cyclical thing we're going through, um, but I think we're gonna see more consolidation and more rationalization of assets and, and more focus on how to diversify out of um, only domestic markets and, and Mexico's very logical, obviously, for any Texas company. This concludes this episode of Midstream Connect. We wanna thank you, our viewers, and our sponsors for making this segment possible. Until next time, let's stay connected. To stay up to date on the most recent Heart Energy videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here.